Good morning everyone and welcome to Rashmi Baptist Church on this Sunday morning. Welcome especially if you are listening via the phone and cannot see us. Welcome to those who will be listening later on YouTube. And if you are watching now live on Zoom, please could you turn your camera on so we can all see each other at this time of fellowship and worship. I'm Beth, I'm one of the members of this church and I just want to welcome you today uh, for this Arise service. So firstly, we're going to start by singing the worship song.
Morning everyone and welcome to the Arise service this Sunday. And for those of you who don't know what Arise is, it's our service that we do here at Rushmere that allows our young people to take the lead on a service once a term. And it's a really fantastic opportunity for them to step up and really take part in a Sunday morning service. Now, this one has been a bit interesting, as you can imagine. Um, it's looking a little bit different to a normal Arise service. Um, but I just wanted to say before we got going that I've been incredibly proud of how quickly um, the young people have turned this around. They've, um, they've led this from kind of thinking up the idea of the topic all the way through to actually getting it ready for um, this morning and getting the videos sent in to me. And they've been fantastic because it's not something they're used to. It's something new to them, as it is to all of us. Um, but they have been fantastic through all of this. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to them, first of all. Um, and I'm just going to pray and then I will hand straight over to our young people as they lead to service. So, Lord, I just want to thank you for the young people we have in this church. And I just want to thank you for the, the knowledge and the wisdom that they can bring to us now. And I just pray that you would speak to each and every one of us through our young people um, as we listen to the service this morning. Be with everyone this morning. Amen. Brilliant. I'm going to hand over to our young people now um, and we're going to start with some prayers and a reading. Let us pray. Each morning we wake, another day consumed by the news of the coronavirus as it races across the globe, destroying all of our freedom and liberty. We pray for all who are facing isolation, hardship, hunger, fear or anxiety. Lord, let them know that you are close and guide us where we have time, energy or resources to reach out and bring relief to others. We pray for all those who are sacrificing safety and comfort so that others can be saved, for doctors and nurses and key workers. Fill them with your spirit and let them know that they walk in your footsteps. Through this time, help us to draw together in spirit, even while we are apart. Help us to seek out the lost and the lonely and to know that in all circumstances, however dark things may seem, we are loved and we are eternally safe. Your love has always been like this. Help us to know it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for looking after us during the COVID crisis. Please give the government wisdom as we come out of lockdown. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we lift up to you all those people around the world and nearer to home. We struggle and live in difficult situations all the time. Help to bring peace to those families and individuals. Help them to feel loved by you. Let's take a moment to name those quietly or out loud. Be with them and comfort them. Give them hope now and in the future. Amen. I'd like to start by asking, who here has learnt to tie-dye, run a thousand miles or play piano? For those of you who know me, know that I have made zero use of my time and haven't done any of these things. You will also know that from Christmas last year, I was very ill. I later got diagnosed as glandular fever, followed by post-viral fatigue syndrome, and I was on very heavy medication. This meant, heading into lockdown, I had already had a lockdown of my own, and the boredom set in day one. Lockdown has been a learning curve for many, I believe. It's been a time to learn how to be alone, how to make the best of bad situations, how to help those in need without having direct contact, and how to make banana bread. For me, I only learnt this after a couple of months, previous to which I felt isolated and alone. I really um, struggled at the start of lockdown, stopping schoolwork almost immediately. It hit me that I would be missing my GCSEs and there was nothing within my control I could do to change the outcome. Many things happened that were out of my control and having endless time to sit at home and think about it made every thing a hundred times harder to cope with. I found this all very hard and my family struggled alongside me. My sister was away for all of this, but came home two months into lockdown. 
and it has allowed us to grow a lot closer and helped both of us feel less alone and more capable of dealing with the struggles. We have found that leaning on each other and supporting others has helped us realise God's intents and lessons within lockdown. Many of my friends have felt the same. They have found this time very difficult and out of their control. I believe coming out the other side of lockdown, more people will realise that we need to support those around us, especially the vulnerable and lonely. The remembrance that we are never alone is what I'm most thankful for at this time, but I pray that everyone else struggling may also be enlightened to this. For those of you who have learned how to do 10 keepy uppies with a toilet roll, or throw a ball backwards into a bucket, congratulations, please teach me. But for those of you like me who haven't and have struggled, that's okay. It's okay if this time was more of a reality check than anything else. It'll be okay now because we all know that God is with us and therefore we are never alone. Spread blessings and joy as God wished and stay happy. As Corey Ten Boom once said, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within the world, you'll be depressed. But if you look to Christ, you'll be at rest. Thank you. I am reading from Daniel chapter 6, verses 16 to 24. So t King Darius gave the order, and Daniel was brought in and thrown into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May the God you serve all the time save you. A big stone was brought and placed over the opening of the lion's den. Then the king used his signet ring and the rings of his royal officers to put special seals on the rock. This showed that no one would move the rock and bring Daniel out. Then King Darius went back to his palace. He did not eat that night. He did not have any entertainment brought to him and he could not sleep. The next morning King Darius got up at dawn and hurried to the lion's den. As he came near the den he was worried. He called out to Daniel. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, that you always worship, been able to save you from the lions? Daniel answered, Our king, live forever. My God sent his angel to close the lions' mouths. They have not hurt me, because my God knows I am innocent. I never did anything wrong to you, our king. King Darius was very happy and told his servants to lift Daniel out of the lion's den. So they lifted him out and did not find any injury on him, because Daniel had trusted in his God. Then the king commanded that the men who had accused Daniel be brought to the lion's den. They, their wives and their children, were thrown into the den. The lions grabbed them, and before they hit the floor, they crushed their bones. In God we trust. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you could join us for our rise service. Myself and Kira will be taking the talk today based on the theme, Trusting in God. When we were discussing what the rise service theme would be on, it seemed more than appropriate to talk about what lockdown has been like for us. So I wanted to find a Bible verse that put this across clearly, and that's when I found Daniel and the lion's den. King Darius looked at me and frowned. His finger wandered around the room. When I looked up, it was pointing at me, so my head fell back down. King Darius's voice boomed the hall. Send him to the lion's den. I wasn't afraid. Feeling two of the men grab my shoulder, I began to walk. The walk seemed like forever. I could hear the men behind me whispering and dragging their feet. The king pointed again, stopping us all in our tracks. A soldier scuttled towards the rock that was hiding the den and suddenly I felt my feet leaving the ground. I thought I was flying, but no. One of Darius's men had picked me up so swiftly it was like no one wanted to go anywhere near the den. The soldier stumbled, causing me to tumble into the den. Crash! It was cold, dark and gloomy. With the king's last words still floating in the air, May the God you serve all the time save you. But I was not afraid. A lion's roar beckoned in the mild darkness. 
yet my heart did not pound any faster. Silence. I could hear the claws of the lions moving. In a moment, I was face to face of one, its breath clearly distinct with the smell of flesh. Just for that moment, I thought, I thought I was going to be its yummy meal. But the light came, and it sat in its mouth. The Lord's angel would not let the lion bite me. So I fell asleep, along with all the snoring lions. Meanwhile, King Darius lay awake in his royal chamber, having had no food or any slight entertainment that would have made him smile. He did not know what the cause was, but when morning came, he hurried to the lion's den, longing to hear Daniel's voice return to him. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God saved you from the lions? The king fell ill with nerves and began to feel his knees tremble. A sign of relief clambered out of his lips when Daniel replied, Our king, live forever. The men who were involved the previous day felt reluctant to pass down a rope. They heaved Daniel out with some difficulty and saw that he had no injuries to their surprise. The lions hissed below and the den remained open. For as Daniel explained to Darius that his god knew he had done no wrong, the angel had been sent to shut the lion's mouth. Darius's voice vanished. He scanned the area and looked at his men. His face turned sour as the guilt-stricken men tried to hide what they had done. At last he spoke. Those who accused this man wrongly shall be thrown into the den, along with your children and your wives. A frightful squeal appeared amongst the men and they were tossed into the den. They hadn't even reached the den's floor when the sound of bones crunching began to echo everywhere. The reading starts from verse 16, but the main focus of what came to me was from verse 22 to 23. In one of the lines in verse 22, it says, God sent his angel to close the lion's mouths. In this, the lions represent the pandemic, and Daniel represents the world in the single person thrown into this den of the pandemic. God's protection is close and strong, and God's angel is sent to protect Daniel and keep him safe. But I know that if I was in Daniel's place, I would have felt very much fearful and in a lot of doubt. And the common phrase hanging over me, what if? I know that during this time, that common phrase, what if, has been very relatable to me, as my school studies have been thrown into so many unknown circumstances. However, I've had to trust in God, like Daniel did, to know that he will be there helping me through it all. In the line 23, it says, they lifted him out without any injury because Daniel trusted in God. I'm looking at this and thinking, that's it. Due to Daniel trusting in God, he had no injury found on him. And this is my assurance that with faith and trust in God, he will protect me. When I think of when Daniel was lifted out of the den, I imagine it being cold, dark and gloomy. The stone placed in front of the den represents our houses and the seal that was placed on the rock shows that Daniel was not to be taken out, are the rules of which we must follow at this time. So that when we are lifted out of our houses and the seals have been removed, we will have no injuries because we would have trusted in God at this time. Daniel couldn't and wouldn't have got very far if he hadn't have trusted in God or had any faith in God. Before I move on and I pass over to Kira, I'd like to read you a poem that I've written in this time. As a reminder to myself that God is always there, I've called it lockdown. It's been a dream, no way of waking, but there's a light, it shines so bright. In all the darkest places. A rainbow, it's our thank you, it's a promise to you and me. The agreement of God to all. A flood will never destroy the earth. We believe it, having faith and trust. Light, shine, light shall shine through when we can finally hug our loved ones again. 
join together to praise his name, and I long for that day when I can say, Hallelujah. Some of our favourite songs talk about trust too. My Lighthouse by Wren Collective describes a journey where there has been rough and safe times, but you're always trusting in God. The song reminds us that the seas can be dangerous places and a lighthouse guides ships through dangerous times. The captain of a boat has to trust that the bowls on the lighthouse won't suddenly go out or that the light will not lead them to the wrong place. We can have even more trust in God. He is our lighthouse. For today, the stormy sea can remind us of the world trying to find its way through the pandemic. There's a song called Confidence by Santos Friel. In the chorus, two lines stand out for us. The first is, so give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. And the second is, so you will face my giants with confidence. With confidence, you are not afraid to do anything because God strengthens us. If you can, I would suggest listening to this song later. 10,000 Reasons by Matt Me by Matt Redman, which we sang last week, is also about trust. The words of the verse, the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass, whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. It reminds us that God has plans for us. The words also remind us that what we are saying, that we will trust God for the future. But is there a difference between faith and trust? Here are two scenarios. One is about trust and the other is about faith. But which one is which? The first one is, all the people in a village decided to pray for rain. On the day of the prayer, everybody came together to pray, but only one person brought an umbrella. The second one, in a game a parent throws their child into the air, the child then laughs because they know that they will be caught. So, which one is which? The first scenario is about faith. The person who brought the umbrella was prepared for the rain that they were praying, that they were praying for. And the second scenario is about trust. The child laughs because they know they will not be caught. Another difference is that the trust can be based upon evidence but faith means no evidence is needed. Finally there is a poem written by Mary Stevenson called Footprints. At the end of the poem there is only one set of footprints in the sand. The footprints represent the journey through life. The man is always walking with God. At times there are two sets of footprints and to others there is only one. God is asked why there are only one set at times, but God replies, that is when I carried you. We can have faith that God can carry us, but not drop us. One night I dreamed a dream. I was walking along the beach with my Lord. Across the dark sky flashed beams from my life. For 18 I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to me and one to my Lord. When the last scene of my life shot before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. There was only one set of footprints. I realised that this was the lowest and saddest times of my life. This always bothered me and I questioned the Lord about my dilemma. Lord, you told me when I decided to follow you, you would walk and talk with me all the way. But I am aware that during the most troublesome times of my life, there is only one set of footprints. I just don't understand why, when I need you most, you leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never ever during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was when I carried you. 
Brilliant. Thank you all for being with us this morning um, during our Arise service that our young people have led. I just want to reiterate again how proud I am of all of our young people for getting involved. Everyone stood up and, and got involved in some way and that was fantastic to see. Um, and I had very little involvement in terms of topic and content and I'm really proud that I can just sort of um, trust them with this kind of thing, especially as it is slightly different now. So we're going to sing a, a, a final song uh, in a second to sort of end the service. Um, but I'll just pray as we head into that. So, Lord, thank you for speaking to us this morning and thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for what our young people have and can bring to us. And I just pray that they would go into this week um, knowing what they have said this morning is so powerful and so relevant to today. And I just pray that you would um, really rest these words on everyone's hearts that's listened this morning. And as we all go into this week, that we would really hold these words dear to our hearts um, and just know that you're with us throughout this week and the coming weeks. Amen. Brilliant. So we're going to sing our final song now um, to end our service.
We're about to go into our coffee room now. We'd love you to join if you're able and would like to. Please remember that when you get the notification, you need to press join now, not to join later, because we won't be here later. If you would like to discuss anything in the week or would like prayer or feel something God has put on your heart, please feel free to contact either Heather or Hazel or the pastoral care team. You can do this via Facebook, the church website or the church telephone num number.